Ren McEachran, former acting chief of the FBI's Internal Corruption Union, joins me. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay, tell me how this works. As soon as the judge signed the search warrant on August 5th, and it had like a two-week period in, a window in which to do it, um, the FBI has it now. Yeah. Who makes the decision when to go? It's coordination between DOJ and the FBI. They've got that 14-day window to make sure that everything's set up to make the execution on the warrant. Obviously, 14 days can't go beyond that, but as soon as that warrant's signed, they can actually execute that warrant. Well, why wouldn't you go with urgency, especially when they said that the, what they were warning about when they asked to seal it from the judge, it said um, that they were warning of destruction. So it seems to me if, if, I, if I was worried about destruction and I got a judge to sign it and it's a mile from Mar-a-Lago, I'd go. Yeah, I mean, in my experience, uh, executing many search warrants, especially sensitive search warrants where you think there's an issue of urgency, I'd want to go as soon as that warrant signed and think about the process. This affidavit didn't come out of nowhere. They knew this was coming together. They had time to prepare and get resources in place if they wanted to execute when that was signed that Friday evening, I suppose, uh, before 10 o'clock, right? Um, so they, they know that's coming. They have time to prepare for that. So if that urgency issue is there, I would think they'd want to move then. Uh, it is a little odd, the timing, but then again, we don't know all the facts, and so it's hard to really say why they waited. I think that's fair. We don't have all the facts. It's a developing story. We're learning something new. I mean, there may be a lot that we don't know it, uh, involved in. Um, one, one of the things that I thought was curious, though, is that if you're worried about destruction, I mean, look, the target, I suspect, is President Trump. I mean, that's I mean, who they think who has the documents and who get who, them. He's up in New Jersey at his golf course. And the uh, and um, and the Mar-a-Lago is guarded because he's a former president by Secret Service. Um, so I mean, so I mean, I don't know if they were worried about you know they didn't worry about destruction for that reason. But then why would they say to a judge that they are worried about it? Because that would not probably be very true. Right, that's a great point. We don't know though who the exact target of the investigation is. We know there's a search warrant at a residence that's associated with the president in this case. Um, but the destruction issue, if they're worried about the, uh, the, the former president destroying the documents and he's in New York or in New Jersey, that's, a, that's kind of a tough question. And uh, they tell the judge that they're worried about that. Right. I mean, However, that's what it's right, like. Right. I mean, like it's, it's, it's hard there. to be worried about him if he's in New Jersey <laughs> and it's being guarded by the Secret Service. However, if he's working with others, right, if there's a potential conspiracy, he can just make a phone call, allegedly, wherever mm -hmm. the subject is, to say, hey, you know what, let's destroy those documents, shred those, or let's transmit that, right? So you can't just assume that because a person's not physically there, they don't have a position to decide what happens with that evidence, right? Okay. In, in the old days, it used to be that the, um, the FBI agents would go to the courthouse and they'd sit before the judge and they'd swear to the affidavit yeah. and they'd get the warrant. But this is done by WhatsApp. It's done, it used to be, then they'd be after, after the old fashioned way, then they did by telephone. Now it's by WhatsApp. So, how's this done? You know, it, it's after COVID or during COVID, where we stand in this, everything has changed with, I guess, the protocols and the processes to get this done. Ultimately, the, the things that are important for the magistrate, at least in my experience, is that they have an affiant who can swear to the facts and what they think is the evidence and the probable cause. And once that's done, once they've actually gotten to that point where it's uh, signed off and the judges, and in this case, the magistrate has signed it, uh, they can go forward. But the use of electronic communications to to just coordinate those efforts, that's a... 2022. That's a, that's a sign, right, that right. things are moving along and that they're using technology. That's okay, I think. A any idea how many uh, warrants you've, you've gotten or worked on? In oh, the my God. I mean, I would imagine over the years, uh, you know, tens of hundreds. It's hard to keep track. It's a, it's a okay. big part of our tool All set. All right. Have you ever been denied one? Uh, not that I recall. Um, but you know, see, this, I think that's important, and I think it, that's important for American people because these are these are one-sided, and they're. I mean, it's like you know, I was a defense attorney, and I, they certainly weren't they weren't denied when my client when they were executing my client, but right. but it's like they're they're granted almost all every time. It's a great point, but I would say is though at least in the FBI we were taught to collect overwhelming evidence, right? And so we want to make sure that we have a home run when we have our information together. We're putting that affidavit together. We want to make sure that there's no doubt in mind that we've got the probable cause that it's going to get signed. Uh, and if the judge says it's not enough here, I need more, we'll go and get more and do whatever is needed but to get that done. But you didn't win every case, right? No, that's So a, that, that's so that when too. you got the other side, you know, I mean, like, a well, warrant is a one-sided thing, but yeah. when you heard the other side at trial, you might not win. That's right. And you don't win every investigation, right? Our job is to find the facts, right, and get the truth. Um, sometimes we're involved in investigations, and 
you don't get there or the person's not culpable in the end. That's actually a good example, too, of the justice system working, where we're working hard and we don't get there and, and that person doesn't get charged. The search warrant doesn't get executed. So it goes uh, both I, ways. I, I've worked with a lot of FBI, and i got to tell you, I admire the FBI. I mean, the FBI has done, you know, I mean, you know, oftentimes against my clients, but uh, <laughs> otherwise they've been very helpful. So I'm a big fan of the FBI as well. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Appreciate thank you. it.